Hello, we're Pastor Derek and Zephyr Reigns. Welcome to our YouTube channel where you can find Bible-based teachings designed to help you excel in God and excel in life. Don't forget, subscribe to stay connected with us. Log on to excelfl.org to learn more about us. And if you feel led by God to give into this ministry, you can give by clicking the link below or by text to give at 904-201-2022. And remember, go excel in God and go excel in life. We've been talking about moving into a new season. We did part one, part two, but we're going to shift gears today. And I want to talk about, um, I don't know if you've seen the little song. Uh, I was riding in and I said, oh man, they got my little song. You know, God is everything. I'm telling you right now, he is everything you need. Anytime you need him, whatever you need him to be, you know, God can be that for you. But, but we're going to move into another area, area today. Um, the, the, the title for the message is God is faithful. God is faithful. When I say God is faithful, I don't want you to hear that as a, as a cliche. As, oh, yeah, he is faithful. You know, he kind of came through for me uh, uh, when I was hungry and I had some ramen noodles in the, in the pantry. He kind of came through for me. He's, he's very faithful. Oh, he's really faithful. I woke up at 2 a.m. in the morning, forgot I had that Snicker bar in the, in the refrigerator cubby there, and I just looked behind that butter, and I seen that Snicker bar, and I was like, oh, God, you're faithful. I, 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 when I say God is faithful, I'm saying the, the Alpha and the Omega. The one who knows the end from the beginning. The, 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 the one who created, created us in our mother's womb and had a conversation with us before we came from the unseen into the seen. I'm talking about an omniscient God, an all-knowing God. I'm talking about a God who still told Moses, look, just go tell those people that's complaining about you know this and that. Moses is like, man, I have a speech impediment. I can't say this. I can't say that. What do I tell the people? Da, 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 da. And God said, tell them this. I am that I am. What was he saying? Anything you need me to be. I am that. And when I say God is faithful, he has been faithful to us. The first thing we want to comprehend when thinking about his faithfulness is that God is faithful in his name, <laughs> his character, and his word. The faithfulness of God is deeply rooted and is an integral part of who he is. God is faithfulness. Everything about him is faithfulness. So as, as we move into this message today, we want to be keenly aware of what we call the assumptive knowledge of God's faithfulness. A lot of times we assume that we, we, we understand the faithfulness of God, but it's, it's very difficult mentally. With your, if you employ your intellect, you could even quantify the lengths that God goes through to make sure that his, he upholds that name. He upholds what he calls faithfulness. You can't even quantify. Somebody said, man, I just got here this morning by chance. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. I tell you, I was just kind of healed. I just got, you know, I just got lucked up and I lucked up and I kind of got the job. No, you didn't. God is faithful to you. God was touching hearts along the way, moving this person, moving this person, moving this person, doing this and doing that. He might have been doing it 10 years ago. You don't even know. You can't even quantify it. But here's what you do know. Within him, his character, his word, his, he is faithful. Amen. Mm. And God is keenly aware of this reputation, his, his, his faithfulness, his name, and his covenant. Let's go to Psalms 106. Psalms 106. We're going to read verse 1. Praise ye the Lord, O give thanks unto the Lord. For he is good, and for his mercy endures forever. God is never short on mercy. God's mercy is going to outlast generations after generations after generations. He's never short. On mercy. Who can utter the mighty acts of the Lord? Who can show forth all his praise? Remember we said you can't even quantify. You can't even put into words the faithfulness of God to his children. Verse 3. Blessed are they that keep the judgment. Keep judgment. And he that does righteousness at all times. What I have learned. <laughs> I'm telling you. A lot of times we think we're living for the now. We think, you know, discipline is for the now. We think, you know, praying at 5 a.m. is for the now. Every single moment. We think that, you know, telling our flesh no is for the now. It's not for the now. When we do those things, we want, this verse 3 says, Blessed are they that keep judgment and he that does righteousness all the time. When you marry an all the time righteousness with an all the time faithful God, your life is limitless. It is, it, 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 
is limitless. Verse 4, remember me, O Lord, with the favor that you bearest unto thy people. O visit me with thy salvation, that I may see the good of thy chosen, that I may rejoice in the gladness of thy nation, that I may glory with thine inheritance. Verse 6, we have sinned with our fathers. We have committed iniquity. We have done wickedly. Verse 7, our fathers understood not the wonders in Egypt. They remember not the multitude of, the, of thy mercies, but provoke him at sea, even at the Red Sea. Uh, nevertheless, verse 8, he saved them for his name's sake. He saved them for his name's sake. Remember, the first thing we want to comprehend, when thinking about the faithfulness of God, we need to understand that God is faithful to what? His name. He saved them for his name's sake, and, and he just didn't do that, that he might make his power to be known to them. See, wrapped up in God's faithfulness is his, is his yearning desire to make his everlasting power known to you. I tell you right now, it is never boring to be a righteous Christian. <laughs> it's just never boring. People think, man, I'm going to lose this, I'm going to lose that, I can't do this, I can't do that. You can't do what? You can't do what? Feed your flesh all the time? Pour liquor down your throat to, to, to alter your mind, to make you feel like you're doing, you're having a great life and all this kind of stuff. Pour pills down your throat to alter your mind, to make you feel like life is grand, so on and so forth. No, living for God is phenomenal. Because he's faithful. And when I say it's phenomenal, what I'm saying is when a man or a woman can wake up to a God that they know is faithful, and they marry that righteous living with that faithfulness, you wake up in such control of your life. Not to the point where you're proud or arrogant, but what I'm saying is you know who you are, you know whose you are, and watch this, you can manage yourself. You don't need social lubricants to make you feel like you're having a great life. You don't need to puff, puff, pass to make you feel like you're enjoying this life. You don't need to be in Miami with your girlfriends, you know, every three times a year going crazy to make you feel like you have a good life. It, it's it, a, a faithful God and a man or woman who walks in righteousness. Here's what, here's what happens. Inherent in that relationship is the good life, what we call the Zoe life. God made himself known to them. <clears throat> hmm. And you know, being surrounded, just in this season of, of transition that we've been in, being surrounded, and, and this is what you want to, this is what you want for yourself, what we're about to read. Being surrounded by faithful people and people who believe God with you is one of the most rewarding experiences our human soul can ever experience. Because you say, oh man, you know, people's up here doing this and doing that and, and you know, and, 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 and Brother Chris, you know, Brother Chris built the stage and did some other stuff and, and you know, Brother Dexter Alley, he was an electri electrician and all this kind of stuff and, and the ladies cleaning the restroom and, and, and Brother Jonas, he did this and he did that and, you know, a host of other guys, Brother Sedlak, Brother Cannon, all these guys, it's like, man, the, the boy, they got great hearts, don't they? Well, they do. But when you stand back and realize, is God provoking men in their heart towards a vision to labor in it tirelessly day and night. You, that experience right there, it's mind blowing because you know they're not, they're, not, they're not doing it to be recognized by flesh. They're doing it because there's a faith of God who's provoking them to show love, to give back. That experience right there, you don't want to live this life and never experience or be surrounded by Faithful people of God. We've been loved immensely. We've been stretched immensely. We've been supported immensely. We have been encouraged immensely. We have been inspired immensely. God has shown himself so strong in our lives and met our faith with such exactness. When I talk about this faithful God, this, 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 this God of faithfulness, I want you to, when you walk out of here today, I want you to know that God is an exact God. And when you're walking with God by faith and believing God and stepping into the unknown, and all of a sudden you don't know if when you step it's going to be, is the floor going to be there or not? Let me tell you something. Walking in the unknown with God, we call it walking by faith, is one of the most powerful places you ever want to be as a Christian. But he, he, he met.
at our faith with such exactness. And every time we believe God and say, man, we got a deadline to meet. We need this. We need that. Da, 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 da. And I, I still feel like it's going to be around 2 o'clock today. We'll get that thing. I'm talking right on time. I feel like tomorrow, you know, that thing will come through for us, this, that, and the other. I'm talking right on time. And somebody said, well, how are you going to do this? How are you going to do it? I said, man, I, I don't know. That's not a good place to be. What do you mean? It is a good place to be. Why? Because when my knowledge runs out, God's all-knowing knowledge kicks in. So he met it with such exactness. And one of the greatest disciplines we've employed during this time is don't get the big head. It's not you. <laughs> I mean, who do you think you are? Who do you guys think you are? Because God has been blowing our minds. I'm talking every single day. And it's so easy to step back and say, yeah, 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 you see what I did? You look at me, look at me, look at me. And it's like, no, don't look at you. Look at God. What God is doing is faithful God behind the scenes, man. And nobody can tell me that ministry is stressful. Nobody can ever tell me ministry is stressful. Ministry is not stressful. Ministry is stressful when you try to. When you try to twist the spirit's arm into doing what you want it to do, that is when it gets stressful. Ministry is beautiful. Being in ministry is beautiful. You know why? We co-labor with a God who's faithful and all-knowing God. And you know what? No pressure on us. God, this is your church. <laughs> no pressure on us. God, these are your people. No pressure on us. That thing is so beautiful once you get a revelation of it. He met our expectations with such um, exactness until our mouths dropped and our knees had to bow to his majesty. No words. I got a video of my wife, and I meant to play it today, get it to him to play it today. But it was one morning, and everything was going great. You know, there's a lot of people, you know, you, you praise God and tears and snots and all this kind of stuff when things are going bad. But you, you got to learn to, okay, things are going good, job is good, kids are good, marriage is good, everything is good, I'm healthy, I got my annual checkup, all this kind of stuff. You should have more tears praising God for the goodness. Then the, then the, won't you help me, won't you help me where you at God in the midnight hour? I mean, my God, I, so, I'm, so, so, uh, so I get up reading the word of God like we always do and just, just, and she's over there doing her thing. And, but, but, so we got a king size bed. She's sitting over here. I can't even see her. I, I, I kind of see her doing something, but I, I can't see her because I, I like the mattress to be off the ground. I don't like to have a low bed. I like, I like the mattress up. So I'm, I'm sitting over there, and I'm just kind of, and, and I just had to reach up and get a piece of paper or something. And, I, and, and when I went to reach up, I seen her little hand up. I said, man, what's she over there praising God? What's she doing? So I took my little phone out, because she, she sees everything. She don't miss nothing. I took my little phone out, and I just, I, had, I, I held a camera right over the mattress. And I went down, and I just, I just started recording. And, and, and all she was doing, and, I, and I'll show you later on. Not today, but you see it. She said, man, I, she's got to prove it now. Preacher's not lying. All she was doing was lifting her hands, waving her hands to God, crying, wiping tears, back and forth, still in the nightgown, hair, you know, just like all y'all, all y'all's hair when you wake up. You got a little bunny on your head, or you, it's just flying everywhere. But, but in her raw being, Praising God for his goodness. This faithful God. And I sat there and watched that and I said to myself, that's the only kind of woman I want. A woman who gets to the end of herself and goes, you know what, let me just lift my hands to the Lord of Lords and the Kings of Kings. Because I know that as long as that engagement is happening in our household, man, we're going to be okay. We're going to be okay. And you know, <clears throat> Here's what you want to be on guard for when we talk about this, 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 this faith for God. And here's how the world tries to get us. Any increase in security, any increase in security, and I'm talking about, I'm talking about you feel secure now that you have your, your contract. You feel so secure now that your numbers are 
are so up. You feel so secure that your boss said, look, we'll, 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 we'll never get rid of you. Now, now all of a sudden, it, just in that sentence, you feel, now you feel so secure. Any increase in security that doesn't involve God leading you. Any insecurity that doesn't involve God leading you and sustaining you. Listen to me. Don't trust it. Back, back off of it and go, okay, great. I'll, you said I'll be here for another 20 years. That's great. Man, my heart was hit or fell to my ankles when I got the news. Man, man you, you, I missed this. I missed that. Man, I, man, I, I thank God and I'm still here. That's good. But if you start leaning, say, you know what? I'm secure here. And it's not God led, don't you even trust it. Because what happens is that thing will come right back around. <laughs> you're so secure, it'll come right back around again. And when you're nipped or clipped, you're gonna be shocked. Shocked at what? Man, I thought, I thought we was, I ain't gonna thought we was nothing. You better be plugged into the God of faithfulness because anything that breathes this surety in the flesh, don't trust it. Don't trust it. The only thing you trust is, is the Lord of Lords and the Kings of Kings. And when that little thing comes out, you go, you know what? Hey, I, man, I thought they was going to, you know, I kind of, I survived that thing. But you know what? Survive or not survive. God is still my source. I'm not going to plug into that. Wall Street, I'm not going to plug into youth. Thank God for the Dow Jones being 21,000. Thank God for that. Stuff happened. But you know what? God is my source. You immediately take your attention off of that thing who's trying to, that's trying to, to give you a sense of security to make, to, to, to disengage you from this faithful God. You, so you go, no way. I don't trust that. And Psalms 118.8 tells us, put no confidence in me. Put it in your Lord. Why? Man will let you down. Man will let you down every single time. And I'm convinced most relationships that fail, you know why they fail? Because two people have put too much confidence in one another's ability to love them like God. Here's what, what are you doing? You wasn't there. You wasn't there. She wasn't there. Well, hey, I'm not God now. I had this. I had this. You didn't show. I, I'm not God. What's going on with you? You have put too much confidence in this relationship. And the Bible clearly tells you. Now, he's not saying don't like man. He's just saying there's a line. Man cannot uphold this faithfulness that I'm talking about this morning. Only God can uphold 24-7 every time the sun rises. Only God can hold that kind of faithfulness with us. Amen? Amen. A man of faith. A man of faith. A man of faith never defaults to worry. A man of faith or a woman of faith, they never default to worry. They never default to toiling. They don't allow chaos to cause their flesh to engage too quickly. These are people of faith. And in this uncertainty, in this chaos, in this worry, people of faith who have a relationship with a faithful God, they do one thing when it's chaos, when it's worry, when it's toil, when it's uncertainty. It's one word they do, seek. They seek. Seek what? Seek ye first the kingdom of God. No, you got to seek. You, you need to seek uh, a monster.com. No, I don't. They can talk to the mouth catcher on fire. I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I don't put my security in that. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. His ways. They seek. They don't nurse and rehearse it. They don't, oh, my God, what's going to happen? Oh, my God, my, my, kid, my kid, my wife, my husband. They don't do that. What do they do? They seek. The minute you feel worry, chaos, toiling, uncertainty, or oh, watch this right here. The minute you feel a manufactured security, they say, boy, life is good, life is good. When the last time you read your Bible? Life is great, life, life is grand. When's the last time, when's the last time you, 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 you hit your knees before God? See, I'm around men of God. I'm around men of God that I can look up and I say, what is he doing in that corner? Oh, he's over there praying. Man, I thought he was working here. What is he doing? He's over there praying. 
was around Deacon Randy, we was, we, was, we was painting these walls and cutting in and this, that, and the other. And a worship song came on. This is men. These are men now. I was around here. I said, I, I, I said Deacon Randy, I said, man, that song right there will make a man go to his knees in worship. You know what this man of God said? He said, no, it won't. I was like, oh, boy, what do we have here? <laughs> so, so, oh, boy. <laughs> man. He said, he said, no, it won't make him go to his knees. He said, it makes me go to my belly. Prostrate before the Lord. I said, good God Almighty. Seasoned men of God. Young man, I, I hear what you're saying. You're excited. Uh, 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 to your knees. Uh, you, 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 there's another step to that now. It'll make a man go to his belly and lay before God, prostrate before God, and cry out to God. Matthew 6. Matthew 6. I don't believe what you're saying. I'm telling you, we have seen a faithful God I am so glad we, while on this earth, have experienced walking for real <laughs> by faith with God. Somebody says, I already do that. Mm. What if you get an email right now in the service and they go, hey, we'll cut your job out. No need to show up Monday. What happens? My mouth will be moving. You won't hear a word I'm saying. <laughs> Some people get up and leave, man. What, 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 what? what? Man, it hadn't even been 24 hours that you're freaking out. You're toiling, you're, 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 you're worrying, you're uncertain. You're already gone. No. Seek ye first. Matthew 6, verse 24. No man, we're talking about a God who's faith. No man can serve two masters. So you can't serve God and money. No man can serve two masters. One thing about money, uh, Proverbs 23, verse 5 says, your money, your riches will grow wings and fly away on you. While you have all your little confidence and your little tax return, you look up 60 days from now, and that tax return is gone. Like, man, what happened? Man, I didn't know I had to get tires, had to do this. And a lot of people, you know, when it comes to tax returns, they, they, they violate wisdom financially all year long, wait on the influx for the tax return, get the ego, get the big head, and you know, can't nobody tell me nothing. And it's like, you've been doing that for, for 15, 20 years depending on that money. And Jesus said, look, nobody can serve two masters. No man can. Either he will hate the one and love the other. Somebody said, man, I never hate money. I tell you, you may not hate money, but you may hate a violation of what money got you into. What am I talking about? You walk out there and look at that car and it's $900 a month. It was exciting the first 30 days when you walked, drove it around, showed it to your girlfriend, showed it to you, 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 you took, took it at your job and, 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 and you got out, of, got out of your car at Houston's and, or Cheesecake Factory and you hit the remote behind your back just so everybody could see it, <laughs> see your new vehicle, all this kind of stuff. You rolled through the park and you kind of let the windows down so everybody could see it. But I tell you what, at the end of 30 days when that $900 a month come around, you look at that car and go, my God, I hate this thing. <laughs> Man, I'm tired of paying for this thing. What happened? You're going to love one hate the other. Or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon or money. Therefore, I say to you, here's what you do, man of faith. Take no thought for your life. Take no thought for your life. Man, you want to you wanna, you wanna, you wanna say, I exemplify the Christian life. I exemplify being a believer. I tell you what, take no thought for your life. Now, he's not saying take your glasses off and ride down 295 and, 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 and be faithful. Hey, you can't say you're going to hit somebody. He, he ain't saying that. What he's saying is all of the toiling, all of the worry, all of the chaos, all of the uncertainty. Your kids are over here. He's over here doing this. She's over here doing that. He's in jail, out of jail, in trouble, out of trouble. He says, look, take no thought for that because it's still in, it's still in a part of your life. Okay, if I take no thought, well, what else do I engage in? He says, take no thought for what you will eat. That's tough for some people now, including myself. The brother here, we was in here painting. I said, man, I said, this man, it's 1 o'clock. I said, but dear sister brought him a snicker bar. I said, man, it's 1 o'clock. You want to eat that snicker bar now? He said, absolutely. <laughs> King's eyes. said, let's not get spiritual here now. I said, man, I said, you going to put all that sugar in your body this time of night? I ain't think nothing about it. I said, boy, he's, he's pretty adamant about that. And she came right back over there with a honey bun. And, and she said, hey, you want this honey bun? She said, she said Pastor Ray, you want this honey I said, nah. I said, too late. Me need a honey bun. I want no honey bun. And he came off of his paint bucket and walked behind her and said, hey, hey, I, I, I'll take that honey bun. I'll take that honey bun. And, and, and I looked at him. 
And uh, I said, my God, bro, I said, you kind of out of control with the sugar late at night like that now. And 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 he was plain and simple. It, it was very, I guess he was sleeping. He said, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> who cares? This honey bun's getting ready to go down, buddy. So take no thought for what you'll eat, what you'll drink, nor for your body, what you shall put on. Is not life more than meat and the body more than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air. Or look at the birds. For they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly, this faithful God, your heavenly Father, he feeds them. Are you not much better than the robins in the sky? Yeah, birds are real smart. You, you, they know, what was we at? We was in uh, the Atlantis, in the Bahamas. And remember all those birds coming around? We're sitting around eating a piece of this, that, and the other. I was like, why are all these birds flying around? I can't eat with all these birds. Here's what they knew. You drop a crumb. <laughs> My God has already prepared. My God knew you was going to be on that boat, sitting right here, eating that piece of pizza. You ordered it, and you didn't like it. And he knew that I was going to be flying around. He said, look, I take care of the birds. How much more than you? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubic to his stature? You're not going to grow taller. You're not going to change. I mean, worry, worry stresses us. Uncertainty wants to stress us. When we're in chaos, it wants to stress us. But people of faith thrive in chaos. They thrive in it. The bad report does not spoil their week. What do they do? They seek and they believe. Verse 28. So why, why do you take thought for raiment? Consider the lilies or the flowers of the field. How they grow. Have you ever thought about that, Derek? You ever walked outside and looked at flowers growing? You ever thought about that? How do they grow? Well, I didn't put no water on them. I know you didn't. I didn't put no seeds in the ground. I know you didn't. But what I want you to do is look at how they are, look at how my system is self-sustained. Taking care of them. They bloom. They die. They go dormant. They bloom again. They go dormant. They bloom, depending on the time of the season. But my system is taking care of them. So look at them. And maybe your confidence in me taking care of you will begin to grow. He said, look, they don't toil. They don't spin. They just do like my wife. Stand there and look pretty. <laughs> just stand there and look pretty. They don't toil. They don't spin. Verse 29. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? When a faithful God calls you, <laughs> summarizes your faith with little, he's not falling short. We're falling short. Verse 31. Therefore, take no thought. Don't even put your mind on it. Don't nurse and rehearse it. Take no thought saying, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? Or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly father knoweth that you have need of all these things. This God of faithfulness. Did you see that? He, he already knows what you need. The book of Philippians says, my God shall do what? Some, my God shall supply all of my needs. Not according to your company. Not according to your contract. Not according to your mom. Not according to your dad. Not according to the economy, but according to his supply. And people of faith that understand the, 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 the sheer desire of God to take care of his people. When you hear what we just read, verse 31, take no thought saying, what shall you eat, what shall you drink, wherewithal, where will you be clothed? Verse 32, for all of these things do the Gentiles seek, but our heavenly Father knoweth that we have need of all these things. So what do I do? Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Not just that, and his righteousness and all this stuff you're worried about, all this uncertainty, all this worry, all this stuff, seek ye first kingdom of God. And let me tell you something, Derek, these things will be added unto you. See, when you're serving a God who's faithful and you're just walking through life, serving him, serving him, living for him, this, that, and the other, what you don't realize is the addings. 
You, you need to take note of the addings. Because as you seek in chaos, as you seek in worry, as you seek when you're toiling, you're living your life and you don't realize there's addings happening. Your baby gets on fire for God, but you're so busy with your job, you don't even realize it. Your daughter walks in and says something you know, from the word or whatever it is. You're so busy and so dark going tied up in worry and chaos, you don't even realize, do you see the call of God in your daughter's life? Do you see that? You ain't pay attention to it. You know why? You wanted to get a homework done more so than listen to what God is saying to you. God is adding to you, sir. God is adding to you. The addings, the, the, this, this faithful God is constantly adding to us. So I take my eyes off of the worry. I take my eyes off the uncertainty and I seek ye first the kingdom of God. And while I'm seeking, he's adding. He doesn't just add when things are going great. Because this God I'm talking about makes a way out of no way. So when you are, glory to God, when you are in the no way period of your life, don't worry. Don't toil. You just know, no, oh, he's already made a way out of nowhere. My back's against the wall. I'm fine. I'm going to seek God. He's already, this faithful God has already made a way out of nowhere. But, but there's, there's a roaring lion that seeks whom he may devour. And I'm convinced once the world, once the, the world understands this, the grace of God, this God is not out to hurt nobody. He is out to share his unmerited favor on all men. But once you realize that this faithful God never sleep, never slumbers, you know what you'll stop doing? You'll stop trying to make life happen. You'll stop trying to make yourself happy. You'll stop. you just, you just say, you know what? That's it. You know, I, I have relatives who've struggled with substance abuse. I have friends who've done it. It's that and the other. You taste it one time and you keep tasting it, but it can't give it to you no more. But when it stops giving it to you, it starts destroying you. It starts destroying you. So seek ye first kingdom of God, and all these things will be added unto you. Verse 34, take, uh, take therefore no thought for tomorrow. For tomorrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Do you understand that tomorrow has is, is already taken care of for you? Yeah, I got to get on the road tomorrow and go up that road. Well, I, it's, it's very simple. Angels prepare my way. Father, I just declared that my trip is unhindered, uninterrupted by any satanic or demonic force. Angels prepare my way. It's already prepared for tomorrow. This faithful God I'm talking about. Man, I really got to really uh, get my grades up, man. I'm, t I'm, 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 I'm in the 10th grade, and I really want to go to Florida State, whatever that is. Uh, but, but, but my heart is ready to serve God. My heart is ready to go to college. The minute you incline towards that way, things begin to happen in the spirit. Decision makers, men's hearts begin to turn towards you. And you look up, there's no 13th grade. After 12th grade, you got to do something. You got to go to military, community college, something. <laughs> you got to do something. But, but you look up uh, and, and walk across that stage, you get your commencements, which, which, is, which is a beginning <laughs> to life. You get that thing and go, how in the world did I get to Florida State? My Lord, a full ride to Florida State. i never seen that. Yeah, you did. You seen it. You seen it when you said it. Because people of faith will say it before they seen it. See it. Because they know they serve a faithful God. In your notes, as believers, as people of faith, that's following this God, this faithful God, don't allow your heart to push you to a stronger will. A lot of times our heart likes to push us to increase our self-will to make things happen, to really make it go. No, don't allow that to happen. What's happening is, you, you're going to have to pause and you're going to have to engage with this faithful God. Say, God, normally this thing goes like this. I could do it with my eyes closed. Something's not right. I mean, I'm saying all the right things here and this, this thing ain't doing, it's, it's, it's not. You've allowed, you, 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 you've allowed, you, you, your heart is trying to push you to a stronger will. So what am I going to do? I'm going to make 25 more phone calls. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to beat the payment. I'm going to do this, that, and the other. No, 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 no. God has already made a way. Here's what I've learned. A closed door with God is profitable. Hard to accept. You know, the, 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 the human spirit is hard to accept. Okay, that door is closed. 
man, I've lost something. No, you don't. no you're not. You haven't lost nothing because this God, this God of faith I'm talking about, once he closes the door, he's got another one open for you. He's got another one open for you. So don't allow your heart to push you to a stronger will and start to think, and start to think the, the, that, that the lesser of the two is faith. Strong will, faith. But the world wants to push us to begin to think the lesser of the two is faith. No, the lesser of the two is, is self-will. The lesser of the two is strong will. Because this God of faith has already done it. When Jesus was up on that cross, he said, look, this thing is finished. I am not getting back up here. I can promise y'all that. So everything you need has already been done. You just have, you don't have to have perfect action. Just have right believing. And right believing of what? That my Father which is in heaven knoweth everything you need. He knows it. So just have right believing. But, but, but the world wants us to think stronger will is the greater of the two. And faith or walking or living by faith is the lesser of the two. Strong will isn't faith. Did you hear me? A strong will isn't faith. God goes, man, I'm making things happen, this, that, and the other. And I, I, I said, man, that, 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 that's great. Uh, 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 how much time have you been spending with God? Matter of fact, are you even in church? Nah, I'm just kind of just feeling my way, this, that, and the other. Feeling your way? I, I don't understand. How much time have you been spending with God? You just spelled out to me everything is going great. Strong will, self-will. That's good. But, but you're not walking by faith in no area of your life? You're not believing God for nothing? Man, you, 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 you bought into security. Don't do that because the God of faith does not want us to buy into the world of security. He wants us to walk by faith with him and not by sight. Determination isn't faith. And I'm going to make it happen. I'm just determined to do it. I'm determined it's going to happen. Just go, 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 go. Oh, my God, don't let anybody steal your dream. I remember my spiritual father said, look, I'm not a dream stealer. I'm a nightmare stopper. My sweetheart, you, 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 you hopped out here, and, and, and there's only one Alicia Keys, and I've heard, you know, this, that, and the other. And, 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 and you've been trying it for eight years, and, and, and what I'm saying is, why don't you give God one year of your life? No, 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 no. I'm going to stand up there, and I'm going to say something. About, I'm, I'm going to read my letter. When I get my Grammy, they say, yeah, I know it. I, but I think when greatness shows up, it shows up. It doesn't take eight years. You, you, you immediately go, whoa, what, what was that? And he said, look, I'm a nightmare stopper, but people get so determined until their determination floods out the faith, the, 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 the faith of God that they should be walking in. They just gush it out. Just, just, just wash it out. Say, man, you walking by faith? Nope, I'm walking by self-will. I'm determined. Matter of fact, Brother Derek, I got my confessions on my, on my rearview mirror. I got my confessions on my uh, uh, bathroom mirror. I, I, I got them on my, uh, on, on my door when I walked in. Okay, well, your confessions. Yeah, yeah, I just, the law of attraction, it does this, it does that, and just kind of pull the energy down and all that kind of stuff. Man, you are determined to make something happen. Yes, you are. But you have got to, as a believer, at some point, walk by faith with this faithful God. And you know, faith... And we're saying God is faithful. We're getting there. Faith is a strong conviction of things you can't see. <laughs> you talk to a man of faith, he's talking about stuff, and you're like, where is it at? I, I don't. But you, you're hearing his voice. He is convicted that he sees these things. He, he, he's strongly convicted that he sees these things. A lot of the stuff you see, I seen. We seen. Man, I, this was a tile floor with some tile that'll make you slap your mama trying to get it up. <laughs> Calluses. I mean, they're, 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 they're still there. Scraping glue and all this kind of stuff. It, it wasn't this. These were classrooms. Now, this, this, this was a what, a community college or something like that? Some training center, ACT, this, this, this. And if you've never engaged his faith with God and go, okay, that's it. I'm going to walk by faith with God. And Lord, I put all my security in you. Job, you are not my source. 
I will not lean on and trust in you. I will trust in my God. And I will seek ye first him and his ways. And that's the bottom line. You will take so much worry out of your life. You'd be amazed at how many people make good money but worry about losing their job. All the time. Worry about losing their lifestyle. All the time. It's like, man, you're making good. You got a good career. Why are you so worried? Because all of your confidence is in a fleeting thing. Faithful people. Mm. And you know, God's faithfulness, watch this, is enough for us. God's faithfulness is enough for us. God's strength behind us, his strength behind us, his interest in us, his love for us, his spirit that abides in us, his arms are constantly around us. And this faithful God is more than sufficient for anything that's in front of you. I remember one time I was, <laughs> buddy of mine was speaking, and he said, uh, he said, uh, how many of you guys out there, you know, you got debt, this, that, and the other? This, that, and the other. Hands went up, this, that, and the other. He said, how many of you guys, how many of you guys work from nine to five? And then after nine to five, you just kind of, you know, you got kids, activities, and, uh, you know, you just kind of, you got yard work, and. Uh, you kind of binge on TV and just sit there with the remote in your hand. And you, you, know, you go for a walk in the neighborhood, this, that, and the other. Blah, 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 blah. He said, and uh, what you've done is, he said, you put all of your confidence that when you wake up tomorrow, your job's going to be there. He said, <clears throat> he said, people who don't do that, they come home, they engage their family, but from 7 to 12, they sold their time to Bank of America. They sold a part of their soul to that corporation. He said, but people who don't do that over there, he said from 7 to 12, that's when they build their life. I thought the company built their life. The company don't build a life. The company provides a paycheck. That's it. And that company can say at any time, that's it. No more paycheck. What am I saying? You, 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 you. He said, he said, he said, he said, now, he said, he said now, he said, man, I said, who wants to make an extra $10,000 a year? And everybody's like, 10000 who could use that? No one. I'm like, man, what in the world are you talking about? He said, uh, he said, he said I'll tell you what, middle class person, take every problem you got. And he said, uh, put uh, 15K in front of it, see how fast it disappears. He said, put 15K in front of it and see how fast it disappears. What was his point? His point was, a lot of times when we're hearing this stuff, you know, hearing this word about a faithful God who takes care of us, who makes a way out of nowhere and all that kind of stuff, you know, if you've engaged in the, in, in, in the in, if you've engaged with the world as your security, you just kind of cast it off. And people who have engaged with the world as security over here, they cast this off because they feel like this is forever and this God of faith is on call just in case I need him. Here's the truth of the matter. Uh, my spiritual grandfather, <laughs> spiritual father, here's the truth of the matter. What I've witnessed the more they have, the more they believe. The more they have, the more they give. I can remember my spiritual father saying, look, I, you'll never catch me with so much, so much money that I'm not dependent on God. But that ain't going to happen. So I need to give something. Because money will try to take away your belief in God. You don't believe that? This faithful God said, look, I'm going to supply all your needs according to my riches and glory. Money will come in and go, how much you got over there in that 401k? How long you been in that corporation? 20 years, you're fully vested. Psh. Man, you ain't got to go to church. You ain't got to believe in God. What, what is that God of faithfulness? You don't need that. And man, you look up and MCI WorldCom hits your company. Man, who, who is MCI WorldCom? Exactly. Bye-bye. <laughs> Walk by faith with God. God's 
faithfulness is enough for us. God's strength is behind us. His interest is in us. His love for us. It abides in us. His arms are constantly around us. And his, and his, his grace is sufficient for the task that's in front of us. The enemy wants to deceive us into thinking we can handle things on our own. And this God of faithfulness is saying, look, I want to be there every step of the way. Yeah, my kid is doing this. I want to be there with you during that time. Yeah, my baby's over here acting crazy. I want to be there with you as you walk this thing out. And a lot of times, <laughs> I tell you what, I, I can deal with a man stretching and a man really trying, but I can't deal with foolishness. Just flat out foolish, just crazy, smarter than everybody in the room, and ain't got a dime. Uh, 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 offering a shirt that's not even on your back and can't nobody tell you nothing. You ain't going to be stressing me out. I remember my grandmama told my uncle, you ain't going to stress me out now. <laughs> Everybody else run around here and go crazy. What are we going to do and all this kind of stuff? You ain't going to stress me out because, look, I'm plugged into God. You need to plug into God. I've chased you around enough. That is it. Why? My grandmother had a revelation of this God of faithfulness, and we need a revelation of this God of faithfulness. Our goal as Christians is to become skillful believers of God's promises. Skillful believers of God's promises. Because God is a faithful deliverer of his word. He's faithful. It is impossible for man to live in despair, live a life of despair when he has keen knowledge that this God, this helper, this God, this God of faithfulness is omnipotent. What does that even mean? He's unlimited. He has unlimited power. He's able, one translation of un, uh, omnipotent is he's able to do anything. This life, the goal of life, the goal of money, the goal of the world is to bully our faith. Push back against it. So you don't need God. Just made this, you just made that. You don't need God. You just made this and made that. Oh, serving God is silly. Living for God is crazy. All of the fun is going to leave your life. Let me tell you something. If you're having fun and killing yourself, that's the dumbest thing I've heard before in my life. You're killing yourself. If you're having fun and, you're, and your son is watching you bring a, a, a different lady in the house every single, every single month, you're not having fun, sir. You're destroying generations. If you're having fun and every time your daughter looks up, you're over here doing this, you're over here doing something, what they call ratchet and all this kind of stuff, not knowing, not knowing the greatest recorder of humankind is a kid's eyes on his parents. Books, books are not going to teach them more, more than what you're putting in front of them. So you can be book smart, you're little, but when they grow up and hit 14, 15, little awareness comes on. They go, where did you come from? What do you mean, where did I come from? You've been putting this in front of me all my life. I was smart down here, but now I kind of know some things. I want to, man, let me tell you something. You, 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 I tell you what, we learn to walk by faith concerning our kids. It's my, yeah, they're little anchor biters now. You can put them in the backseat like a bag of groceries, and you can take them anywhere you want to go. But when they start getting their own little minds, it's so now I want to do I want to do this. I want to date this. I want to do this. Oh, I want, I want, I want to tattoo up under my eye. I, yeah, tattoo up, what, what are you talking about? You, you, you got to be, it, 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 when their will kicks in, your tail will be walking by faith, raising those kids. I promise you that. In this faithfulness that God has for us, we have plans for our life. In this faithfulness that God has for us, we as believers, we have plans for our life that we're writing down that we'd like to accomplish. Jeremiah 29, this God of faithfulness, he has an attitude towards us. He wants to partner with us as we build a life. As we build anything, as we raise our children, as we make decisions, as we go left, go right. <clears throat> Verse 11. For I know the thoughts that I, I who, this faithful God, I think towards you, says the Lord. What kind of thoughts do you have towards me, God? Thoughts of peace. Thoughts of peace. Peace. Financial peace. Peace. Parental peace. Peace. Peace in your body. Peace, peace of mind. I know the thoughts I have towards you. Thoughts of peace. And peace encompasses every area of our lives. And not of evil. I'm not looking out and trying to kill nobody. Who told you that? Who told you I just decided to take your mom away from you? Who told you that? I didn't decide to take your mom away from you. Who told you that lie? I don't have thoughts of evil like that. 
Who told you I caused that car wreck? Who told you that? Who, who, who even told you that? Who told you I made your child do that? Who even told you that? Because I don't have those kind of thoughts. I have thoughts of peace towards you. And not of evil. You know why? Because I'm faithful. You know why? To give you an expected end. I already know what the end is going to be. I already know. See, here's the problem. God knows the end from the beginning. So, this faithful God who says, look, I already got it mapped out for you. You're sitting here single now, and three years, you're going to be married. Two years after that, you're going to have twins. I don't see that. That's the problem. I always tell single men and women, you know, when we, when we say single, well, I just, I, I think I'm going to walk out. Uh, Jesus, Jesus kind of faith when it comes to being single. Jesus was single, so I'm, I'm going to walk it out like Jesus. Well, you can stop lying in church, number one. <laughs> just, 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 just stop. Just, just say what you want and, 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 and walk it out with God. But, but he already knows that you're going to be married in three years, and two years after that, you're going to have twins. And, and, and you may be sitting there saying to yourself, married in three years, two years I'm going to have twins. I can't even see that. That's the problem. See, an expected end, God says, look, I, I, I go out here. I know the end of your life, but I'll tell you how I did it. I went out here first. Then I came back. And I started it. And Jeremiah 29 says, I know about the thoughts and plans I have for you. And inherent in your life is not catastrophe. That's just the evil that happened when, when, when Satan, when that thing happened in the garden. That's just the evil and the sin that came into the world. It's there. But he says, I have thoughts that, that's peaceful. I know the plans. I, I got everything laid out. So what do you got to do? Well, I have got to master living in the middle of your plan. You got this figured out. You had this figured out. I'm just in between. What am I doing? Walking it out. Not by myself will. Walking it out by faith. Well, how can you be so sure to walk it out by faith? Well, you just said you got thoughts of peace to me, so I'm, I'm, I'm taking every step knowing you're, my God's going to take care of me. I'm taking every step knowing I'm going to go ahead and marry this woman. I feel like this is, this is my wife. I got my wife for 20 years. I'm going to talk about myself. But I'm just saying, you're a single man. I feel like this is my wife, so on and so forth. And, I, and I'm going to marry this woman. And I'm going to honor this woman. We're going to build a family. We're going to have kids. Instead of the other. What am I doing? I'm just master living out in the middle of God's plan. Who knew the end from the beginning. So therefore, in the middle, all I got to do is walk it out. Don't freak out. Man, that's not going so well for me. Sure, God took my job away from you. No. See, everything that God does is inherently good. God knew that your job was going to disappear six, six months from now. But when, a, when, when something like that happens, you got to say, okay, this God of faithfulness, he's got something better for me. Man, they flushed out your division? Yeah, but I already know th th this God that I serve, I'm in the middle right now. I'm mastering, living in the middle of his plan. Thoughts of peace, financial peace. This is not destruction for me. Let me just go ahead and get my neck out stretched. And next thing you know, you go from 125 a year to 175 a year. How did that even happen? Because everything that God does for me is inherently good. This God is faithful. This God is just. And he is a reward of those who diligently seek him. Can I get the uh, Jeremiah 29 in the message? And while they're getting that up, let me give you a thought. There's more safety in the middle of chaos than it is in the calm waters without God's presence in your life. The waters can be real calm, but if God ain't there, that's not safe. You have more safety in chaos when you're leaning on God than you do when you're in calm waters and he's not even there. Yeah, everything's going so great in my life. Where's God at in that? Nowhere. You're not safe. Don't lean on that. Do we have a folding chair? Like a black folding chair. Somebody grab a black folding chair. I want to got a little demonstration spirit on me here. In the message translation, Jeremiah uh, 29. This is God's word on the subject. As soon as, 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 as Babylonian 70 years are up and not a day before, watch this. I'll show up and take care of you as I promised and bring you back home. Here's God in the message translation. I know what I'm doing. I 
have it planned out. What kind of plans do you have for me? Plans to take care of you and not abandon you. Plans to give you the future you hope for. When you call on me, when you come and pray to me, this God of faithfulness says, guess what? When you call on me, when you come to me, when you pray to me, he says, I listen. I listen. See, a lot of us, when worry and chaos hits, we employ our intellect. And employing your intellect will only get you so far. Employing your intellect will get your A on a, on a test. But I tell you what, you walk in that house and say, honey, how are you doing? And she goes, and she says, uh, fine. And you've been married one year? You can try to employ your intellect, you know, what, what is it, uh, men are from Mars, women are from Venus. You can, you, you can do all that kind of stuff. So how was your day? Okay. Said, Man, I've been married, to, you know, the book didn't tell me how to handle this. I've been married one year. What's going on? Uh, honey, uh, what's, what's for dinner up there? Uh, put some in the microwave. You can cook it. Why? What? You try to employ your intellect and try to figure out, man, what, where's this thing going here? And a book can't even teach you that. But if you say, you know what? Something is going on here. So let me put my briefcase down. Let me go in here and just pray to God. Seek him first. Come back out and say, hey, she went to get a breast exam today. And I walked in. I forgot about that. Jesus. Man, I didn't even say anything about that. I just walked right. I didn't even bring it up. Uh, sweetheart, can we have a do-over? And tears started going down her face. Well, what's wrong with you? I think they, they found something. See, if you'd have walked in and engaged to God and not employed your intellect, the Spirit of God should have prompted you when she said nothing. Right there, intellect couldn't do nothing for you. But this God who says, when you pray, I listen, he'd have prompted you to say, hey, Go put your arms around and say, hey, what's going on with you? How are you doing? And everything I had going on today, I, I think I had a practice with the guys. That can wait. What's going on with you? That's a man who employs his prayer life. He seeks God in the midst of chaos, in the midst of worry. And if you've never been around somebody who's got a bad report, gets a bad report, and seen the reaction of family members and kids, you, 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 <laughs> I tell you what, you, you're gaining, you're gaining a lot of respect for this faithful God I'm talking about. We was in Gainesville, dear person, something happened, guy was hanging out with his wife and, and went to lunch or something like that, and right after lunch, aneurysm. My God, where are they at? Oh, they're, they're down in Gainesville, a UF uh, brain surgeon. And to see that man of God come, come out of that, come out of that uh, conference with that brain surgeon. How's it going? So you got to go through a leg, come all the way up a leg, and you got to do something, you know, to the brain. I said, through the leg. I said, my God. And this man of God was standing there so strong. And I'll never forget the words he said. He said, I believe God. And my wife's going to be okay. Now, this is in the midst of chaos. In a trauma unit, there's crying. There's moaning. There's people anxiously waiting on the report and they walk out and the doctors and you hear the burst people of faith are the people who can walk out of that are you emotional yes are you hurt yes but Paul said look no sorry as if you have no hope now this God of faithfulness is going to bring you through this your family and your children but if if you think if you think you have all this figured out and something like that happens right here in the middle, you know what you'll do? To this faithful God. A lot of Christians are in that phase right there. Because employing their intellect led them to thinking that they control life, and then when life hit them with a blind a blind shot, they turn right around and blame God. Employ the word of God in your life today. And pour the word of God in your life today. Romans chapter 4, real quick. <laughs> Verse 16. Therefore, let's <clears throat> talk about Abraham. Therefore, it is a faith that it might be by grace. To the end, the promise might be sure 
to all the seed. Not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham. Watch this. Who is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations. Before him whom he believed, even God who quickens the dead, calls those things which be not as though they were. Then we're going to keep reading, but this has become so absent in the body of Christ. People call things like they like it to be. And call that walking by faith with God. What are you calling forth now? As though you already had it. I'm calling forth 40 pound shit. Well, put down the sweets, put down the Cokes, put down the sodas, stop eating late at night, stay out of the Zaxby's line, stay out of the Wendy's line, stop biggie sizing everything and all that kind of stuff. You're calling forth something, but you violate wisdom in the earth. Call things forth. He said, call, call those things that be not as though they were, verse 18, who against hoped, against hope, believed in hope. My God. That he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken. So shall thy seed be. Verse 19. And being not weak in faith. Faith is a trust a reliance on something you can't see. He considered not his own body dead. Now you got to think about this now. His wife is over 100 years old. He said, man, I got to worry about him. I'm going to be father of many nations. And now we got to have kids. Uh, all the mechanics, uh, man, I'm about 95. Well, he might have been over 100 too. I'm about 95. All the mechanics down here, God, I, I don't even see how this is going to happen. But you know what? Abraham said, you know what? I'm not weak in faith. I'm not going to even consider my age. I'm not going to even consider my physical faculties. I'm not going to let my mind believe my body is now dead and I can't give a seed to my wife. When he was about 100 years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's room, watch this, this man of faith that, that was hooked up with a God of faithfulness, he staggered not at what? The guessings of God? The promises of God. We need to do ourselves a favor and go through the Bible and look at the promises of God. And as you look at the promises of God, the doubts will begin to dissipate out of your life because, because Abraham had to look at his body, look at his faculties and go, how in the world is this? How, how am I going to get this lady? What, how is that going to even happen, God? <laughs> he staggered not at the promises of God uh, uh, through unbelief. See, our staggering is in unbelief. If you're staggering and in, and I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about disguised faith. So a lot of times your, your, your money, your lifestyle, your house, and everything, you disguise faith. People say, oh, life is great. Life is grand. Life is it. Yeah, you're in control. But he said, I stagger not. Unbelief causes us to stagger. But I was strong in faith. Well, when you were strong in faith and all that kind of stuff, giving glory to God. Well, what was your posture? What was your countenance? And being fully persuaded. See, if you, you ever seen anybody fully persuaded or something? You look at a guy six four, and just kind of talking to a guy that's five foot six, and a little five foot six guy's like, whatever. Everybody laughing. Everybody already done played it out of their mind. Man, he gonna pick you up, spin you around like a helicopter, like a basketball, and just and just flip you around and just toss you over there in the, in the bushes. But this little, but, but but this guy has already looked at him and said, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit you here, hit you low, and you're going down, big boy. <laughs> You ever seen anybody that's, that, that, that they're not staggering? I, I'm talking fully persuaded. When's the last time you was fully persuaded in your faith? You sit down with the counselor and this, that, and the other, blah, 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 and, and, and he, you say, uh, how long is the program? It's going to take nine months. You've been, you, you've been doing this for 10 years. It's going to take nine months for us to really, okay, nine months? All right, nine months, I'm graduating. Son, let's not get too far ahead of yourself now. 95% of the guys that, no, 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 seriously. Nine months, I'm graduating. Not by my power. Not by my will. 
But I'm going to do this through the power of God. I'm going to be faithful to God. I'm going to look at these promises, and I truly believe that the power of God will get in me, and his superhuman powers will go to work in me effectually, and in nine months, I'm out of here. When you see somebody fully persuaded, they already know I'm winning. Being fully persuaded, what he had promised, he was able to perform. See, and God's promises is the finished product. When God makes a promise, know this, he's able to carry it out. He's a God of faithfulness. He's able to carry it out. So Abraham didn't stagger, but we do stagger sometimes because of, not that we don't have understanding of the word, it's just, man, we just don't believe. But in this season right here, we believed. We believed. I said, man, I, 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 I told my wife, I, I know what's in me. I know what was put in me. I know this God in this book, so on and so forth. I know not to get too big-headed here. I know to walk in humility. I know to cast all of my cares over on God. He didn't say carry them. He said cast them. So I'm not going to try to figure all this stuff out. I'm casting them over on God. And the lower I go, the higher he takes me. See, the way up is down. The way up is not up. <laughs> the way up is down. You want to go up, you got to go down. <laughs> you got to go down. Jesus, look, you'll never be hiding your master. What? Never. Man, I'm, 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 you'll never be hiding that. What, what was he saying? The greatest among us, the greatest among us is always going down and looking up to this God who's faithful to his word. Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11, uh, verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. You know what he says? You know what he means when he says now faith? Believe now. Believe now. Now nah, I got to wait till I get home. Believe now. And my daughter's 13. I'm just trying to figure out who she's going to hook up with when she's 18. Believe now that your daughter's virtuous. My son, believe now that your son will remain a virgin until he finds his wife, the wife of his life. Believe now. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Verse 2, for by it the elders obtain a good report. Verse 3, through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the what? The word of God. So why in the world would I abort This God of faithfulness, if the world I'm living in, what we see was created by him with words. Man, I'm enjoying nature. I'm a tree hugger. I, I don't want anybody to cut them down. This, that, and that. Oh, so you love nature that God created? Are you in church? No, I just don't really believe in. How can you worship the tree? And you can't worship the one who created it. I, I, you laying down in front of bulldozers and, and log trucks and all this kind of stuff. What are you doing? Yeah, I just, and here's what happens. My mom died when I was eight years old. And I said, I'd never serve God a day in my life. My baby brother was killed in a car crash. And I said, I'd never serve God in my life. Never serve God again in my life. So, so what are you serving now? Trees? You mad at people for cutting down trees? And you're not serving God? Look, God framed this world. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. <clears throat> we should know, we should know, we as believers, should know and be assured of this one characteristic of God. We should know and be assured of this one characteristic of God. I don't care what you're facing. We should know this one characteristic about God. Here it is. It's not, it's not deep. He is faithful. He is faithful. He is faithful. Let me tell you something. The characteristic of God I want you to leave with today is this right here. He is faithful. Glory to God. Were you blessed by the word of God?